How to look at chest X-rays in 30 seconds, surgeon's version. So there are two approaches to look at chest X-rays. Um, you have to have a system anyway. There is the ABCDE approach and uh, there is the approach from outside in. Um, so this, this is, for example, in chest X-ray. Um, I guess you can all spot um, the air on the diaphragm if you're a surgeon just look at the air on the diaphragm and it's normally in the um look at it at the right side rather than the left side uh, because the left side is usually the normal gastric air bubble uh, but yes we can identify one thing very obvious things but in order to not to miss anything you should have a system uh, to comment on x-ray um for example purposes medical legal purposes and for you know life purposes uh to identify and not to miss anything so from outside then you can start having a look at the skin subcutaneous bones look at the ribs follow them any fractures look at the lungs opacities uh, any uh, black translucent things uh, have a look at diaphragm, what's below the diaphragm, what's the claustrophonic angle, is it obliterated, it's not obliterated. Uh, have a look at the heart, the cardiophonic angle, uh, mediastinum, and then have a look at the tubes or other. This is a suggested way and um, you can obviously use it, there's no problems at all with that. But my recommended way and the way which is recommended in ETLS as well is the EBCDE way. Um, a double check the patient name the address of the x-ray you just double check that the patient's x-ray double check is it adequate or not that's really important to check the adequacy because sometimes it's not adequate uh, and we miss some pathologies uh, the patient aligned or not um, at what time this is very very important you need to compare to previous uh, x-rays to see if there are any changes or not, I look at the airway. Um, go to B. B means breathing. So have a look at the extent of bronchovascular markings. Are they reaching the um, thoracic cage or not? And then have a look if there are any plaque. Um, I would say translucency, any plaque or void of bronchovascular marking in wide density. Um, wide density sometimes is homogeneous or homogeneous or patchy and that means something this means another thing have a look at the cardiac shadow uh, how big is the heart um, have a look at the cardiophrenic angle have a look at the mediastinum is it big is it normal um, is it wide in the mean uh, does this might indicate um, injury to great vessels is there any new mediastinum sometimes we see new mediastinum uh, so have a look at the mediastinum carefully um, have a look at the uh, the diaphragm have a look at the air on the diaphragm have a look cost of angle is it obliterated is it normal have a look if there is any tenting have a look any um if the left side is raised more than the right side that's might indicate some sort of uh, diaphragmatic injury or hernia in the uh, in the case of trauma have a look of any um herniating organ in case of trauma as well or hiatus hernia <laughs> Uh, through the diaphragm, through the hiatus. Um, e, have a look at soft tissues, uh, skin, subcutaneous, have a look at the bones now, have a look at the ribs, uh, have a look at any, any fractures or anything. Um, tubes, lines, drains, very important for surgeons as well. So this is a suggested uh, way of having a look at the E, B, C, D, E. Um, compose the screen here and have a look at it um, be if you if you choose to take this way to look at chest x-rays um examples there's an, an example of uh homogeneous opacity uh if there is white whitish homogeneous thing is one of two things it's effusion or hemothorax um hemothorax in case of trauma of course and effusion in case of chronic other things uh, or um, you know reaction or um, or collection from other things okay so it's effusion collection or hemothorax and again we don't interpret imaging or tests in general 
uh, away from the general condition and the history and the examination of the patient. So according to the patient condition and the presentation, it might be effusion, might be collection, uh, maybe a subject leak or something, uh, or borehave or whatever. It might be hemothorax uh, if it is trauma. Again, black bronchovascular markings not reaching to the thoracic cage. Um, it's pneumothorax, as you can see here. That's the line. Okay, that's the line of the lung. And here there is no bronchovascular markings. You can see here sometimes you get confused by the line of the scapula. Don't get confused by the line of the scapula. You will you will see bronch if you see bronchovascular markings here and you see a line here. That's not pneumothorax. Okay, so pneumothorax is black, black, black. Okay, um, and there is no bronchovascular markings. Again here, I will give you a moment to have a look at that. Well, homogeneous um, uh, white and homogeneous black and bronchovascular markings not reaching to the uh, to the end. That's basically human pneumothorax, and this is likely trauma. Okay, again according to the history of the patient, patchy obesities means one of three things. These are contusions in case of trauma or pneumonia infection in case of post-operative uh, cases or, um, you know, I mean, from the surgical point of view, usually post-operative pneumonia. Pneumonia might be, you know, bilateral, unilateral. Edema will be bilateral usually. And these are the signs of pulmonary edema. Uh, you can take it as A, B, C, D, E, uh, alveolar edema, uh, the bat wing sign, uh, Kelly B line because of the interstitial edema, um, cardiomegaly, um, and dilated prominent upper loop vessels, okay, um, and the pleural effusion, a bit of pleural effusion. There are stages of pulmonary edema, and it can cause all of these things um, one after another. I can stop again the, um, the slide and have a look at the uh, signs and the explanation written in it. Um, the other things that we might be asked to comment on from the surgical point of view, uh, to have a look at the tip of the central line, there are a few ways uh, to see the appropriate tip of the central line. It should be at the lower third of the superior vena cava, uh, and there are a few ways to do that. Um, some people say it's optimal tip position will be located in the lower third of severe vena cava, uh, ideally two centimeters below the carina. Okay, so have a look at the airway. Have a look at two centimeters below the carina. This area, and this is from another paper. Um, uh, it just they decided it's about um, the rib here. Okay, and two vertebrae below the carina. So one rib above the carina to two vertebrae body below it. Okay, so the tip should lie in this uh, bar um, a way or another it needs to be uh, around the carina ideally or optimally two centimeters below the carina again very important things as well we might be asked to comment on the ng tube position um, it, uh, for feeding especially in critical care patients um, ng tube is not going to go I, you know, uh, through the airway if the patient is awake because the patient will not be able to tolerate that uh, and will not be able to talk as well. But if it is used for feeding, it's better to check that the NG tube position fulfills these four criteria. One, the path follow the esophagus and avoid the bronchus. Two, clearly bisect the carina. Okay. Three, Cross the diaphragm in the midline. Four, the tip is visible below the diaphragm. Okay, and you have some um, examples here. This is the example the NG tube running, fulfilling the four criteria. But this one, it's off the midline, and there is an ECG lead, um, and it's not clear where is the tip. This one is actually not going to the midline and going to the abdomen. Um, away from the midline and actually this is following uh, the left main bronchus and it's in the lower lobe of left lung so that's you know uh, 
that's a that's a catastrophic situation that's not blue the diaphragm it's actually still in the chest okay because the diaphragm is a dome and this part is still in the lung okay so you need to fulfill this four criteria to to safely start feeding the patient um, after checking the position of the ng tube by x-ray chest drains uh, uh, we do um, um, x-rays as well to check the positions of chest drains um, you can have a look at this one is very badly you know displaced uh, it's just kinked but it can still work and the two openings i can see them inside um, that's probably might be in the chest might be need to be withdrawn or repositioned but this one is definitely need to be repositioned because the things that we look at are, um, are the opening this is one opening inside and the other one is still subcutaneous so this might cause surgical emphysema or cause tension if it is subjected to the air it just lead to air to leak inside this must be repositioned and pushed in the chest or changed um, if the policy is not to push chest strains in the chest uh, because there is of infection again sometimes uh, unfortunately in obese patients it's difficult to insert chest strain if you had a look at this chest strain you have had it distract uh, subcutaneously rather than in the chest and this sometimes happen and that's why we need to check the position of chest strains uh, after insertion uh, or removal so you have to do x-rays before and after um, uh, insertion of chest strain here is uh, have a look guys there's one opening it's inside it looks satisfactory in the um, thoracic cavity so that's a satisfactory um, chest strain position again we'll go back the idea here is um, not just to identify with a quick look the problem with the, with a the chest x-ray you need to go quickly through the algorithm or the pathway or the approach you choose uh, to comment on the chest x-ray um, the one um, i would recommend but the other one is not wrong and you can safely use it from outside in but the one i would recommend is the abcde approach thank you very much and see you in more videos um, thank you